morning and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is let's do it God's way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. And this is a message that we have to the world is that through Jesus Christ, all men can be saved. And uh, people talk about there are, different, there are different ways of being saved, different avenues. And, uh, we live in a society now where the world teaches that there's more than one way to get to heaven. And you got some who teach there is no heaven, there is no hell. But I just want to announce here today that there is just one way. And that way is Jesus Christ. Did not he say, I am the way? I am the truth. And I am the life. And it's an it's a emphatic, I and I alone am the way. I and I alone am the truth. And see, the point I'm running that he's the only way. And so today, the name for God is El Olam. Everybody say El Olam. Say, say, everybody say El Olam. El Olam is another Hebrew word for God, which means eternal God. He's everlasting. And I, I don't have a lot of time to deal with that, but guess what? He's Alpha and Omega. He's got the first word and the last word. He's El Olam. And whatever, the, whatever attribute there is of God, it's eternal. Eternal love. Eternal grace. And we thank God for that today, that he's El Olam. Let's keep the unity. That's what it's all about. It's about unity. It's about unity. And today we're going to look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 26 and 27, which falls in line. This is God's way of teaching us here at Pilgrim Progress that we need to keep the unity. No doubt about that. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 reads this way. Wow. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Now, 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 we've already read it. Now, let's take this personally. That was to the church. Now, let's say it take it personally as a child of God. Be ye not angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. And this morning, this sermon is not for everybody, but I'm glad you're here. What to do with your The very anger. moment that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you became a part of the body of Christ. And now it's no longer me, myself, and I, but now that me should turn to we. Why? Because you are now a part of the body of Christ. We are one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. We all are one, and we all have one head, and our head is Jesus Christ. In order for us to maintain the unity, and in order for us to magnify unity, there are some things we need to take off. We've already found out we need to take off lying. But this morning, we're dealing with another subject. Now, Paul is telling that church, now you need to deal with your anger. There is no room in God's house for spiritual incredible hooks. No room. 
no place for people to be so mad and so irritated and so angered until they are saying anything or doing anything. So this is why in, in Ephesians the fourth chapter, verse 26, it says this. It says, be ye angry and sin not. Now, I, I need to say this. Paul was talking to uh, this church, yeah, at Ephesus, but he's also talking to you. He's also talking to me. He says, be, a, be ye angry and sin not. Now, in that little phrase, there are two commands. One command is, be ye angry, and the other command is, and sin not. I, I want to let you know here, uh, let me be a little technical. This, these commands are present imperative actives. I'm not going to be too deep. It's a present tense imperative mood and active voice. And present tense means it means to, to do something continuously and an imperative means a command and the active voice means that you're the one that's supposed to do it. So what he was saying, whenever Paul was commanding through the Holy Spirit, he was saying I command you to do this continually as a lifestyle. He said, be ye angry present imperative and sin not present imperative. Now, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere with this. There have been a lot of theologians that have been confused. They are saying, they're saying we understand when it says be ye angry. We see that. But is Paul by way of the Holy Spirit encouraging people and encouraging Christians to be angry? Is, he, is, is this a command uh, that says well, you are commanded to be angry? There's been a lot of debate on this. Why would God, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, command a child of God to be angry? Now, watch this now. Watch this now. Uh, and and I, 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 I wrestled with that. And after I wrestled with that, that what the scripture say, is simply saying this. Anger is a part of the human existence. And it's simply saying this, as a child of God, in certain instances, you are permitted to be angry. Anger in itself, uh, in itself is not bad. But it's simply saying this, anger, if left uh, uncontrolled and left alone, can turn into sin. And so what Paul is simply saying this, if you do, when you do get angry, do not sin. You will get angry. There are some things that will cause you to be angry, but in the midst of that anger, in the midst of that irritation, don't sin with it. So, so that statement suggests two things. We can get angry. But also it suggests to us that in the midst of being angry, if you don't watch yourself, you can sin while you are angry. Yeah. There's a thing called righteous anger, and there's a thing called unrighteous anger. Are y'all working with me here? You see, all anger is not bad because some anger is righteous. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you read, praise God, of the word of God, you'll read where that God is angry and God was angry with sin. Uh, yeah, in Deuteronomy 9. But also you will read, praise God, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you read Matthew, the 21st chapter. You read uh, over in John and Luke and Matthew. You read that on that last week, Jesus entered Jerusalem. And the scripture says he walked into the synagogue and he saw people selling pigeons and selling animals and, and, and changing money. And he was so angry until he took a little whip and he, and, and he turned over tables and, 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 and turned all those people out. That was righteous anger. It never said he took the whip and hit them, but he got their attention and he turned over tables. Our Lord and Savior, that's what you call righteous anger because he was not angry what they were doing to him. He was angry because he had zeal for the house of God. He said, this is my father's house and you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves. And because of that, he had righteous anger. You see, good anger is not self 
motivated. Good anger is your response to the injustices of other people. As children of God, we're supposed to have righteous anger for the immorality and the sin and the things that's done in this world. That's what I call good, good anger. If, 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 if prejudice does not anger you, something's wrong with you. If, if a predator that's constantly looking for young girls to take advantage of, if that does not anger you, something is wrong with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, 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 if verbal abuse and physical abuse does not anger you, then something's wrong with you. You see, righteous anger, watch this now, righteous anger simply means that you are angry with the sin, but you're not angry with the sinner. Y'all don't get that. I, that, that, that. That's what you call righteous. Everybody say righteous anger. R righteous anger. Yeah, yeah. Right. Everybody say right. See, righteous anger simply means that you are that you are angry with the sin or the action. But then, my brothers and sisters, that's what I, there's a thing called unrighteous, unrighteous anger. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this down short. Unrighteous anger is simply motivated by what somebody have done to me. It's about me, what you've done to me, what you've said to me, what they've done to me. It's all about me. Unrighteous anger is dealing with self. You are not angry uh, about what's being done, but you're angry about what has been done to you. That's unrighteous. Somebody said, don't you supposed to be, don't you supposed to be upset when somebody mistreats you? Well, hold it now. Got to understand, when Jesus, when Jesus uh, told the disciples to follow him, he said, first of all, in order to follow me, you've got to learn to deny yourself. And unrighteous anger will cause you to quit the ministry. Unrighteous anger will cause you to leave the church. Unrighteous, Lord have mercy, unrighteous anger will cause you to sit in your pew and be on a silent strike. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you want folks to know that you're upset. You want people to know that you are mad and you sit a certain way with your jaws puffed out. And that causes division in the body of Christ. That's what you call unrighteous anger with the improper focus, self-motivated. Instead of reacting to sin, you react to the sinner. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. See, when you are, yeah, somebody may have, might have done wrong against you, but instead of looking at what they did to you, you're looking at the person. And you hold grudges, and a lot of times, and I need to say, uh, more than more than likely, more than likely, some of you here today are holding grudges and animosity with another brother and sister in this church. I can't prove it. I can't prove it. I can't. But more, the Holy Spirit have told me that you have walked in here, and there is somebody in this church that you still can't stand. You don't want to have anything to do with them. You want to di you want to you want to fool with them. With a, you want to you don't want to really you want to give them a ten foot spoon. In other words, you don't want to be close to them at all. You only reason why you're here because this is my church too, and I ain't gonna leave. This is my church, and I hear. Yeah. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm talking about that other, other person. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other person. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Unrighteous. I, I, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this, but unrighteous anger is always selfish. Unrighteous anger causes you to act like a two-year-old that don't get their way. Uh, unrighteous anger cause you to attack the people. Unrighteous anger requires, want you, you always want to have the last word. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes you ought to have the last word, and that last word ought to be, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I tell you, I tell you, this is this is something. Okay, yeah. Unrighteous anger wants revenge. Unrighteous anger wants to disrupt the situation. Unrighteous anger want to ridicule. Unrighteous anger want to criticize. You see, when you're angry uh, yeah, with one person in the church, it will cause you to have a critical spirit about the whole church. But not only that, a pastor can have the wrong anger. And he can spew out from the pulpit. He can spew out in meetings. He can spew out. And so it's just not simply just delegated just to the pew. It's all can be delegated to pastors as well. Leaders. Okay, Pastor, you, you've set it up. But what are we going to do about it? Is there a remedy? What can we do? Yeah, I've been dealing with this anger, Pastor. I've got it. I'm glad you're preaching on this. I've got it. And when you start talking about anger, I had my, I had my amen shoes on. I just took them off. <laughs> I had my shouting shoe on one foot. And the head man shoe on the other foot, but I've taken both. I'm barefooted now. I'm just going to look at you while you preach. <laughs> and it's okay. It says this. This is God's remedy. Look at 26b. It says this. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Stop, stop. In, in, in that first part of verse 26, it says angry. The Greek word there, yeah, is, 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 is orge, but now is moved to wrath. In other words, now you have gotten, you're just not simply anger, angry. Now you are, you're, 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 full, of, you're full of revenge. You, you, are, you are hateful. You are bitter. You see, I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you can't really hide bitterness. I can see bitterness on some of you all's faces. Some of you all are bitter. Everybody say bitter. And I can say that because I'm a child of God and, and the Holy Spirit is that that's a bitter person. That's a, and you can't really hide true bitterness because, the, because under true bitterness is anger that has been allowed to just, to just boil over and over for years. And what happens once you, once you are angry, you become bitter. And once you become bitter, you become resentful. And once you become resentful, you start having grudges and a grudge and you, you start feeding that grudge and feeding that grudge and feeding that grudge before you know it, you, you, you're carrying that grudge. After a while, that grudge carries you. And Paul says here as, as we close, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. I know you're angry. I know you're mad. But don't let it fester too long. The Amplified Version says, do not let your anger to cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. The bottom line is simply this, don't allow that anger to stay in you for too long. It, it, it doesn't really mean that, that once you're angry today, you got to deal with today, although that's the best thing to do. But it's simply saying, don't allow it to linger in your heart for too long. In other words, don't nurse your anger. Don't nurse it. Don't, in other words, if you, go to, if you go to bed at night, hey, don't go to bed with that anger on you because when you get up, y'all, you, you you'll have this bitter sleep and you'll get up a lot worse than you did before you went to bed. And I've come to tell you right now, the reason why some of you all are tired is because you are angry. And you want to, you sleep. You eat, but yet you get up tired. It's because you're carrying grudges. You are angry. You are mad. You are bitter. And God is saying, don't let the sun go down on 
your wrath. But I'm going to get him, Pastor. Pastor. <laughs> Pastor, if the last thing I do, Pastor, Pastor, I'm just waiting for my time now. I'm going to get him. Vengeance. It, but God says, You're going to get him. Wait a minute. He said, Wait a minute. Holy, wait. Wait, you're going to get him. He's saying to you, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. If anybody going to get anything, let me do the getting. That's not your job to get it. To, that's not your job to get anybody. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And by the way, I should be getting you because you haven't been holy all your life. I should be tearing you up because you haven't always been good. Yeah, you, you've been mistreated, but how many people have you mistreated? Anger, this is it. Anger is just like poison. When you swallow it, you need to regurgitate it or take an antidote or else it'll kill you. Anger is just like a fire. If you don't, you know, if you see that, that's why that's why they have fire extinguishers in in homes now, and sometimes in the kitchen in different places. Because if you have a little fire, it's possible if you would do what extinguish that little fire. Because if you don't watch it, it'll spread, and before you know it, that little fire that's starting the kitchen can burn down the whole house. Are y'all gonna help me here? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Well, Pastor, what can I do? How can I do it? Well, first of all, you, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. You've got to learn to forgive. You've got to truly learn to forgive. You, and, 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 and you got to understand that whatever happened to you, uh, watch this now, whatever happened to you, God allowed it to happen, and you got to realize that although Satan and the person might mean it for bad, God has the power to mean it for good. You've got to understand that in the midst of your anger, stop being angry and realize this, that guess what? All things work together for good to them that love the Lord who are called according to his purses. And I'm going to tell you, guess what? Let it, everybody say, let it go. Don't go, to bed, don't go to bed with that anger tonight. Let it go. Whether it's church, whether it's your marriage, whether it's on your job, whether it's abuse, whatever it is, don't let it go. Let it go. Let it go before it's too late. And other thing too, when you hold on to anger, you are telling God, God, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Yeah, I've been mistreated and I'm upset, but I don't trust you. So I'm going to hold this anger until I get them back. When you, when you let it go, you got to tell the Lord, Lord, I trust you. You're going to work it out. And Lord, give me the strength to, oh Lord, watch this. Give me the strength to love them. Oh Lord, have mercy. Give me the power to love them. Instead of you going to bed with that anger, you need to go to bed with Jesus on your mind. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because you trusted in thee. I can't remember the story. This is it. Man came to town one day looking for Satan. He looked, he asked, he said, Can you show me where the devil is? He looked for him Monday, couldn't find him. Looked for him Tuesday, Brother Holloway, couldn't find him. Looked for him Wednesday, Thursday. Looked for him Friday. Saturday, but when Sunday came, it's a going over to the church. And when they walked through the door, the church was at the door, Satan was at the door, give him a, give him, give him a program. He sat down in the pew and Satan was in the pulpit. Satan was sitting on the deacon ministry. 
Satan was saying, saying Satan was directing the choir. Now the problem, the problem, it's just a story, but somebody had to let Satan in. Brother Handy, somebody had to let Satan in. And the scripture says, he said, don't let your anger, what's that? Don't let that, and don't, don't let the sun go down your anger. Why? Because you will make room for the devil. He's just waiting for somebody to be upset. He's just waiting for somebody to be angry so he can get a foothold on, on the life and get a foothold on the church. And before you know the church is tore up, why? Because somebody is upset and mad. Don't. You ever heard that song, Don't Let the Devil Ride? Because if you let him ride, he'll try to drive. But guess what? Don't let him into the church. You need to squatch that fire while you can. And I've come to tell you, we have the greatest example. We have the greatest example of, of that. If when Jesus Christ hung there on the cross, they pierced him in the side. They nailed him on the cross. But guess what? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He died because he rose early Sunday morning. And I've come to let you know here that you have the power. You can do it. You can lay that down because you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And that's all I got to tell you today. Let that anger go. It's messing up your life. It's messing up your relationships. It's tearing up your marriage. It's hurting the ministry that you're in. It's slowly killing you. You need to take that anger right now and say, Lord, here it is. I admit I've heard your word. Lord, I take it to you right now. I'm tired of living this way. I want our church to be unified. And I do realize that I do have ill feelings toward certain brothers and sisters here in this church. And Father, help me to take that out of my heart right now. If need be, let me go to them and, and beg and tell them that I'm sorry for the way I've been feeling. Lord, I want your church to be as it ought to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at ppbc1912 at aol.com or call our church office at 501-372-4425. Where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.